Oh, uh, in I think it's from Newcastle. I think I think it's from Newcastle. His name. He's signing for Man United. Yes. Really? Under under the news. Under the news. Oh, Murabi Jaz ne yar ko dekha. What's your name, Humayun? Murabi Sir. Wasn't um. Yeah, le Murabi Sir. You can share with uh, you know share content. Pingi, um, what's your name? Hamza in the Mid- in the Midland Football Tournament, the na- national one. Go on. There was a, a team, and the guy came as well. Oh Bob. no, Bob Bradford, sir. He's not. He's not Newcastle. Who's he? He's. He was scoring bangers. They left right centre. He's very. Good. I can't remember who he was. Can't remember who he was. He played for Bradford though. He played for Bradford team with a topi. With a topi. With a topi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he played for Bradford. He played for Bradford. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never seen him before. Can I show them? Yeah, sure. That's why I sent you. Acha. Can you see that? How many years? 20 years. 22 years. Wicked. Um, Rabisa, show that again. I think this is uh... exposed. Right, I'm saying he used to be my. No, at Arabia. Who is this? I haven't seen this guy before. Isn't his name Tosin at Arabia? Yes. Yes, just wait, huh? Tosin, because yes. his contact is Mirza Sab sent Mirza Sab sent me the contact name Tommy Els, whatever the name. Tosin, and on his shirt it is written what you are saying. I will send you his shirt. Yeah, he's name. from Manchester, man. Manchester. Uh, he uh, he signed contract for Man City there. Ah, yes. Shah rivals. Oh, 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 oh. His three so, brothers, the oldest brother is the agent, the two younger where, brothers, one's Man City, one's from Crystal Palace. But he's always signing for Manchester United then. He, Man- it's the news which uh, Mubarak Sahab, uh, Mirza Sahab gave me that you can invite him. He's living in UK, so I yeah. thought that it's a good chance. Yeah. Yeah. I sent you him, big, big, big thing. Murabi Sahab, I sent you the picture of the shirt as well. Yeah, I know who he is. I play with yeah. him on FIFA. <laughs> wow, bro. He's you basically are... he's captain. The U- he's captain the UK team under uh-huh. 16, under 18s. Uh, oh, he also, Man, he also played for Man City mm-hmm. uh, against Bayern Munich in the Champions League like a few years ago. Oh, yo, yo, fast. He's a good guy. He's a solid player. Solid player. So, if you get him, that'll be a hit. I've seen him. I've talked to him as well. He came to when I used to do work for Aziz in Manchester. He was there for Juma. Ma sha Allah. Tiga. So look guys, Zakla for coming on. Uh no Kashif today. Kashif. Where is Kashif? I will just message him. Oh Kashif is there. Kashif the dog. Uh today inshallah I just I wanted to share Zaisab Zaisab haven't men- uh, shared the link in MK group. Usually he shared the link so Kashif joined from that link. Zaid Saab. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> uh, let me just, I'm just, I'm just going to play a video quickly. I know you guys have seen it. So basically, the new MTA documentary has come out. Uh, it's about um, brutality and injustice. I don't know. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's very good. So yeah, yeah. There's, I just wanted to show one clip of it. And it's about basically two people. One person who was martyred, Mirza Ghulam Qadir. Oh, yes. Also about uh, Blavid Hazul going into prison. So I just wanted to show a little bit, a little clip from that before we go into Mubarak's your section, just to lead up to it, uh, and then just if we can discuss it just a little bit, because for me when I watched it, um, honestly my my love for Zul went so high, and it was it was such an amazing insight to something which I never saw before. Yeah. Um, so I just show this first, and then we'll just talk about it, just a small clip. despite losing his freedom. Prayer remains Sahib Zada Mirza Masroor Ahmed's first priority. We had to read our whole Tahjjad Baqaidgi. One day before the first day, when we were in the rest, we had to read here in Thana Rawa. So, Mr. Sahib Zada Sahib told me that we had to read the Tahjjad Baqaidgi. I said that I had to read the Tahjjad Baqaidgi. So, I had to read the Tahjjad Baqaidgi. اور جمعہ آپ نے پڑھایا لیکن حکم دیا کہ نمازیں آپ نے ہی پڑھانی ہے 
the prisoners of conscience spend the night in Rabvaz jail. But their situation deteriorates the following day as they are transferred approximately 80 kilometers to a prison in the city of Jung. Here, they find themselves in palpable danger. Police station, they are going to go from here. They are very difficult. 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 The <laughs> were extremely horrific. He was in a very, very cramped room, which was meant for 60 or 70 people to which sit, perhaps at a push, 80 people. But actually, they had cramped in somehow over 220 or 230 people. I went to the the <laughs> Worse, uh, criminals, criminals. He saw how they would pre produce weapons out of whatever they had. For example, they would get spoons and then sharpen the edges continuously until they resembled a knife or a blade. Pakistan, में तो जेल में आप कुछ भी weapons भी होते हैं, knives भी होते हैं, कतनाक चीजें भी होती हैं। तो लोग आपस में ना बातें कर रहे थे, कोई नहीं रात को इन्होंने यहीं रहना, रात को हम इनको देख लेंगे, कि नहीं रात को इनको मार देंगे। अगर 400 आदमी, 4 आदमी को मार रहे हैं, तो केस भी किसी पे � no, no. How do you guys feel when you when you guys watch this? How did you feel? Have you seen it? Yes, yeah, I've seen it. I think you're mute, sorry. I watched that video mainly that part of Ulam Qadir Sahab, how mm. he was devoted to Jamaat and how he was martyred during like he he was instructed by the people that you have to bomb blast or something into the rubba, but he ran away from there. Then they it. they encountered Ulam Qadir Sahab on the road. So Ulam Qadir Sahib said that it it better to be on the road rather than my hand will be used to destroy the holy place, and these type of things. That was so emotional um, part of the whole video which I saw that Ulam Qadir Sahib and Khalifa Rabi was narrating that. That was like so emotional part. Yes. Hamzad, how did you feel like Hazur going, knowing Hazur has been to this kind of jail? You know, they were saying a jail cell which only have sixty to 70 people, but you know, there are over 120 people in a cell. How does, how does that make you feel like our Khalifa was put in a place like this? I think, again, um, I think there's a, bit, there's a bit of the documentary, either before or after that little snippet, yeah. where um, before he's been taken to jail, and one of, his, um, one of the companions with him, one of the friends with him, was saying to him, okay, now it's time for you to run, kind of thing. Now it's time to go, because it's gonna be very dangerous. And I think uh, Hazul's his response was, uh, "We are not we, tell tell so and so that we are not those who run, kind of thing." So again, it's it's a it's a lot of courage, isn't it? It's a lot of courage that you wanna 
you want to try and take um, it's the courage of faith courage of conviction of certainty that Allah's with you and you want to take that on in your day to day life as well isn't it yeah I think they were saying as well that it's, it was a big victory for us because if he was put in jail and he had you know had the um, life sentence with the punishment of capital death, yeah yeah capital uh, punishment if that did happen then it would have been a big victory for the for the the enemies and you could see mm-hmm. how they were celebrating on the streets the mall of you was going down yeah in Yorta, and they were celebrating with him and they thought they had won and mm-hmm. that was actually very scary for for the people in, in the Jamaat at that time especially in Rabbah yeah. because the Mirza Ghulam Qadr he was assassinated yeah Nazir Allah the, the guy the top chief in, of in the Jamaat, yeah, who, yeah. Is Nazir Allah so now he's been put in jail. So for everyone, it was like a very scary moment. Mm-hmm. They can see from Azul's face, you know, as always, you know, he's always smiling. He's always calm, cool, calm and collected. Yeah, he maintained that same character even yeah. after. And even when you see when he comes out, he's still smiling. And, uh, you know, mm. people are playing flowers on his head. He takes it back off and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, just let's get back to work. And they're saying even in jail, he was still getting letters coming to him. He was still signing letters. So like even the people in the jail knew his status. Mm. Uh, they knew how how respected he was. And even I, I didn't know, I, I knew when Azur was elected, you know, we knew something about him, you know, Nazir Allah, but we didn't realize, I think from this documentary, we really understood um, the love everyone had for him at that time, let alone now. Uh, and so that's why you, that's why we know now that a Khalifa is chosen by Allah the Almighty and no man can ever, can ever do that. Uh, that's, that's why for me, it was, it was so emotional because like, you know, Huzur personally, but you know, he's, he's too humble to talk about his life um, when you're talking to him, uh, he's not going to go into detail like that. So that's why, <laughs> that's why in these moments it's very nice to to see that. Zaid, did you manage to manage to see the the documentary? Yeah, I, I did, know you uh, were sending messages as well. Like, must see this is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I I did obviously, um, you know, um, um, see this message from another group, and obviously, when whenever I see something that is, uh, you know, which which can benefit all of us. And you know, motivate us as you know, as, as youth as well, and everything. You know, I want to, to be honest, I don't want to keep that knowledge or that thing just to myself. I want to make sure that it goes out to the surrounding people that I know as well. And that's how you know, I feel that we all can benefit from it. That's that's. I don't want to keep things to myself. So obviously, you know, the that's why I shared it with you guys. And even when I was watching it, you know, I watched it. I tried. To, I watched it uh, twice because the first time watching, I was watching it with my kids and. <laughs> basically you can't you can't fully understand when you're watching with kids to be honest but then the second time when i watched it around and i really kind of kind of understood you know what exactly it was explaining and the other day i was just watching a documentary based on these prisons and um you know prison in spain and all these prisons which are not really kind of looked after properly and what can happen in these prisons and you know one thing that they were talking about you know in these prisons how easy it, it is um you know to kind of um get killed and so on basically and all those signs there were literally in that same prison which was which Hazul was as well in and the condition and everything the way it was explained so for me it just felt like how how is that possible that Hazul you know managed to you know get out of that situation and come out you know mm-hmm. alhamdulillah that that was just like I mean if I, if any other ordinary person was with there and you know him being as the you know Naziri Allah of Jamaat Amdiya in Pakistan that is just i just can't fit that how how it actually happened that i really don't know how, how it really happened it just i don't know how, how you can really escape that but yeah that, that was something for me so yeah the conviction like you said that azur had when he was in prison is unbelievable like yeah like sitting there smiling you know knowing everything's going to be fine but everyone else around you is like this is nazir allah the guy in the yeah thing when azur no said way. can you lead can you lead Juma? he's like no way i'm not going to lead Juma in front of in front of this this personality so they knew like who they were with, but because of his calmness, there's also a video. I think when Azur was going to uh, Fiji, uh, they were going in an airplane and they were going through like a. They were saying there could potentially be a tsunami that could come, and so the plane was shaking, and you can see everyone like holding onto their chairs, and uh, all of Azur's staff and his bodyguards were holding to their chairs. They were quite worried. And then you see beloved Azur, he's got his video camera out <laughs> and he's smiling and he's just recording all of this uh, from the people's reactions. And he's just smiling and everyone's like, Azur, what are you doing? And he's like, don't worry, everything will be fine. You know, Azur's calmness calms everyone else. And he just knows, he can just see you know, two, three steps ahead of everyone else. And that's what makes him such an amazing personality. 
Uh, Morris, I don't know, you, you probably spoke to Mubarak Siddiqui about this, the prisons in Syria, because my father-in-law was also in prison at the same time uh, when Mubarak Siddiqui was there. So that's when they met in prison. Okay. Uh, so they were des he describes to me that in the same situation as Azur was in, you know, there were so many people that there's no space to lie down. That they like literally put like sardines in a cell when only 50 people are supposed to be in there, but they put over 200 people in one cell. So they're literally leaning on people like this to fall asleep. Uh, and when people get sick, you know, it becomes very dangerous and it's, it's such hard conditions that we can't even imagine. That's why when you understand now, when Azur is always saying pray for the people in Pakistan, uh, we don't have a clue of what's going on until like these things are revealed to us. So that's why it's so important. Moraz, you probably understood that a bit more when you spoke to him, Anna. Uh, yes, 100%. And then that's when you understand that, that, that's when you understand the pain that they go through. And when he's doing his poetry, you know, it's coming from the heart and it's coming from his experiences. And that's why, you know, people have such an amazing connection with, with these kind of people. So that's it. That's just wanted to talk about that. And we've got a few more things to talk about the show. Uh, we're just going to add a few things between each of the segments. So I know you uh, prepared the Friday sermon today, so let's just go over that. Yeah, <clears throat> so today's sermon is also a continuity of the last sermon. Like uh, continuing from previous pre pre previous Friday sermon, Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih narrated about the life of Hazrat Saad bin Mu'az. He stated narrating, narrating, narrating about Hazrat Saad bin Mu'az. Hazrat Muslim Maud who states that when a person loves an any individual, he desired that his beloved is not met with any harm or injury. Similarly, was the case with the companions of the Holy Prophet who disliked that the Holy Prophet should fight himself in any battle. So <clears throat> this was the result of their love, their love for him. Uh, when the Holy Prophet sought their advice, before the battle of Badr, the companions stood up one by one, making passionate speeches that they were ready for every sacrifice. However, the Holy Prophet kept and asked, kept on asking more people to speak. The reason for this was that all speeches so far had been given by the Mahajirin, the companions, the migrant companions. Hazrat <clears throat> Saad recognized the intent of the Prophet ﷺ, he stood up and said that the O Prophet of Allah, we were quite we were quite because we did not want the Muhajireen to think that we are eager to fight their tribe. We have recognized your truthfulness with your with our eyes. Therefore, we will follow you whenever you go. By Allah, even if you command us to throw ourselves into the oceans, we would gladly do so. And the enemy cannot reach you without trampling upon our dead bodies. The companions of the Holy Prophet ﷺ says that I was alongside the Prophet ﷺ in 13 battles. However, instead of all that, I preferred that I had said the word of loyalty and commitment that were uttered by Hazrat Saad before the Battle of Badr. Hazrat Muslim Aud <coughs> says that the that Allah says in Quran about protection of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, for him the messenger is a succession of, an, of angels before him and behind him they guard him by the command of Allah. Hazrat Muslim Aud who states that in, in my opinion this refers to both the angels of God and the companion of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, who safeguard him. Uh, once the Holy Prophet ﷺ gathered his companions and said that who will save me from the from this person? He was referring to Abdullah bin Ubay Salul, who was the main culprit behind this move. At this time, Hazrat Saad Allah said that if he is one of us, our tribe, we are ready to execute him. We are also willing to do so if he is from a Khazraj tribe. Hazrat Anwar Ayyel Tala bin Nasrallah said that I will continue to narrate about Hazrat Saad Radiallah in the next sermon. Dakhla man, that's really good. Uh, again, always learning about the promise, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu life, his companions. Uh, let's yeah. all let's take one thing from every every Friday sermon. Yeah. 
uh, and really try to instill that. Uh, Whereas, what did you what did you get from this Friday sermon? Yeah, the main thing is like um, your devotion, like Ulam Kadir Saab, uh, we which we bought in the video. It's the same thing here. Hazrat Saad Zilla who was doing uh, the devotion for the Holy Prophet, the Messenger of Allah, and uh, they are eager to fight. Uh, they are eager to like safeguard the Prophet from anyhow. And the second thing is, um, they said that uh, Mahajirin and Ansar, their um, brotherhood among their um, um, love and brotherhood among each other, and the pro- how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, give equal opportunity, equality like opportunity to Mahajirin and the Ansar as well. There's no discrimination from Ansar and Mahajirin. So equality based and um, the devotion to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or for us, the devotion to Islam and Khalifa, Khilafat as well. Mm, really good, man. Zakla. Uh, Hamid, we good to go? Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, Hamid, me or me? Are you me? Achha. Who else is Hamid? Who's Hamid on the football? Achha. Achha. Yeah, I'm good to go. Whenever, whenever you want me to go, I'm going to be Yeah, so Brooks of the Promised Sire, also, obviously very important. Before that, Hamza. Yeah, yeah. I just want to talk to you about, uh, mashallah, you got your new placement. Uh, very... Yeah, man, tell us a little about it. Um, so it's based, um, it's based up north in Newcastle. And um, it's a little bit different to general dentistry. So what you guys, most of you would have experienced from a dentist, obviously you go in day to day in a general practice and you have like your fillings, your checkups, things like that. So part of the scheme is that, so it's general practice, but the other part of the scheme is working in hospital where you do different things more related to, um, can be related to oral cancer. So like looking, uh, I don't know if you guys know about like abscesses and cysts when there's fluid in the body and draining things like that. Um, uh, patients who've had cancer treatment. So after that, a lot of the time they're concerned about their teeth because if the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy is in that, in that field, it can affect the teeth a lot and sometimes they have to come out. So it's just looking at solutions of how to deal with that and how to manage that. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things in hospital that you don't actually see in, in day-to-day dentistry kind of thing that I'll be able to experience as well, inshallah. Inshallah, we we'll hope and pray that it's, it's good for your career, it's good for the demand. Inshallah. Yeah. And it's for, you said two years? Two years, two years, yeah. In September, you'll be going off to... September, yeah, yeah, yeah. inshallah. Inshallah, if all goes to plan. It's a dangerous accent, remember? <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. But I'll come home regularly because there's not really... Because now we're working, there's not exams to revise for kind of thing. Well, there are a few things here and there, but it's not the same. So I'll have free time after after work kind of thing inshallah how long is it like a four or five hour journey from here uh, no 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 three uh, about three hours three and a bit hours 200 miles well just under 200 miles good, good. so it should be all right come down for the show. weekend for football then yeah uh <laughs> not every weekend i'll try and come down monthly i'll uh, speaking to fizan and the bradford boys inshallah i'll be i'll be up there for a bit as well okay Izzy okay. and his little brother and gasim by and you know must see them like gasim yeah. Amini, all those guys sick guys That's, uh, so that'll be good that'll be good exactly Tell about tell us what book we're learning today and what. Acha tika so. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So the book well, it's not exactly a book, but it's actually a um it's a poem today, uh, called Mahmoud Zamin. So it's a celebratory poem from the Promised Messiah, Alayhi Salam, on the completion of the Holy Quran by Khalifa Sani, Taziyah Taala Anhu. And again, it's a it's a very be- beautiful poem in the sense that it sings the praises of Allah, but it also, um, it also shows the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his distress and his angst and his helplessness for, for his children, that they grow up in a, in a good environment, and for the rest of the Muslim Ummah as well. And for a lot of people who've read the poem, it's quite, it's quite familiar, so you might remember a few verses from it here and there, but um, a lot of people consider it to be one of the most comprehensive and complete prayers in every sort of manner um, in order to gain acceptance from Allah. Um, one of the things that Hazul has mentioned to us in his Friday sermons in the past is about for acceptance of prayer, you need two things, uh, purification of the heart in, in the sense that you don't wish badly on anyone. So no malice or rancor or think what well, wishing badly on anyone or uh, hoping that harm comes to anyone. And the other side of it is distress and helplessness. So in the sense that um, I'm nothing and I need your help for everything. There's nothing, my part, my, what I can do is all from you kind of thing. And it's just, it, it sh- epitomizes that really well. So we just, this is just the first, the first few pages of the prayer. Um, all praise belongs to the being who is eternal, everlasting. He has no associate and none is his equal. 
He alone endures, all else perishes. To fall in love with others than him is but an idle tale. And then he, he also, with this little point here, he elaborates that further um, later on in the poem about how worldly pursuits, it's good to have goals and to be uh, to want to achieve those things, but not to love the world, not to think of it as the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a traveler in this world, not to love with it and not, not to fall in love with idle pursuits and materialism and all those things. It's okay to pray for those things, but not to be obsessive about those things. Can we get, um, Boris, can you read this out in order, please? So, so, yeah, just... I wish I could let him <laughs> you do more stuff. I'm really bad at language. You know, you know from this from this poem, uh, uh, used to be on the card, uh, uh, card. Okay. I think this was on my wedding card as well. Okay. <laughs> Every wedding yeah. card. Yeah. yeah so okay. it's a, no, it's a, when you hear it in Urdu, you understand that it's actually very, yeah. popular, very popular. Yeah. They say all and, the then, Achha. and then, yeah. then again, there's some key themes in the poem. Again, he constantly invokes all of Allah's different attributes. And it's just, uh, it's just an example for all Ahmadis to try and learn those attributes, it's not just memorize them parrot fashion, but to understand them as well. And he always emphasizes showing gratitude, which is, it's okay to do that verbally, but um, the main point of showing gratitude is through our actions, through using all that Allah has given us and using the pract practical effort to serve mankind and to serve Allah. And there's some very the repeated verses that he says over and over again. Holy is he who watches over me. All our comforts are due to his favours. All good fortune is due to his obedience. His mercy is manifest in the sense that a Rahman, mercy that encompasses all things. And again, it's things that we, things that are given to us before our birth, um, like heavenly bodies, like the stars, food, mood, or everything, etc. That um, we don't deserve, that we haven't actually done anything for, regardless of whether we're good or bad, or regardless of effort, it's given to us. And I think he's talking about that mercy when he says his mercy is manifest. Then he talks about sacrifice um, to attain the pleasure of Allah. Um, my Lord, this is your favor. May I be sacrificed at your altar. And this is this little bit here is probably the main, the main reason for his gratitude. It is you who has made this day dawn. Mahmoud has come home, having finished the Quran, having realized this favor, this bounty of yours, the heart of mine is busy singing the, praising, the praise of yours. And again, that sense of thanks, oh my sustainer, how can I ever thank you enough? And then coming back to a little bit at the start of the book about complete reliance on Allah from, um, again, it's all related to Surah al as well. The alone do we implore for help, that we don't go to anyone else for help, not even our parents or our family members or friends. We rely on Allah through that prayer. And there are some beautiful verses again to summarize that. Ever since I have come to know you, my heart has become such that it cannot turn to others for its needs. To die in your presence is far better than to live without you. And by Allah to suffer agony for your sake is much better than being filled with joy without you. And then coming on to the prayers for his sons, um, three sons in total, I believe he had. Um, they are my blessed possessions and they are your servants and are at your beck and call. Bless them with good fortune, endow them with faith, grant them wealth. You yourself protect them and envelop them with your mercy. And again, bless, uh, asking for righteousness and to guide them along the right path. Again, he always relates it to Surah Al-Fatiha. Um, that path of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy blessings from, um, from Surah Al-Nasa and the Holy Quran of that, of that blessed path of prophets, the truthful, the martyrs and the righteous. And then he talks again about Khalifa Sani specifically. Mahmud is a servant of you. Grant him a long life and good wealth. Lift him from every type of darkness. Bless them all with your grace and note them equally with your mercy. Save them from being impure. My Lord, let them be free of all the worldly diversions. And then coming back to that key theme of acceptance of prayer, distress and helplessness, he, uh, he emphasizes again to Allah how, how he's very, he has a lot of anguish and a lot of suffering due to the state of Muslims at the time. And because he wants his sons to do so well in both in their worldly life and their spiritual life as well. And he says, listen to this crying and wailing of mine and provide them with your protection. On account of worries of my heart, my heart is anguish. My soul is so close to suffering pain. My heart bleeds, heart bleeds on account of my woes. Answer my prayers and accept the submission of your servant. 
And then again, coming back to the, the idea that the world is very temporary and he urges all his family, his friends, his Jamaat, that um, the world is a temporary abode that we must leave. We are travelers in this world and don't become so obsessed with the worldly things. Yes, it's nice to have them, but don't, don't make it obsessive. Don't make it your, your work, your life's purpose. And I think he emphasized this point really well with this bullet point here. Oh, my friends, the dear ones, do not be forgetful of the hereafter. Provide for the journey into the next life keep busy doing good deeds. And then he finally comes on to probably the main point of his poem about the, um, the blessing of the Holy Quran and that it teaches that path of knowledge and those who read it um, on them is bestowed the grace of God. It is the fountainhead of all guidance and it bestows light on the heart, it permeates the heart. And again, that guidance is, we, we say it every day in Surah Fatiha, guidance along the right path. And it's also the first part of um, um, Surah Al-Baqarah, this is a perfect book. There is no doubt in it. it is a guidance for the righteous. So it's all, it's all linked to all the successes, it's linked to the Holy Quran, which is why he's so appreciative that um, Khalifa Hassani at that time um, had managed to complete the Quran. And again, it's very short, but um, it's a very beautiful prayer. Jazakallah. So what would be the thing that, that stuck with you with this book? Um, I think this bit, the temporary abode bit, I think you, you hear it every day from a uh, Hazul mentions it quite frequently in the Friday sermons, but um, I think for a lot of people, we, um, we look to our worldly things to first. So I need to revise for this. I need to do this um, for my family, for my work, for my job. And then the namaz and the prayers and the zikr lahi, that comes after. But it's like changing, changing your order almost. Prioritize the, the worship first and then everything else comes after. And then that will lead to success. Because probably most Muslims probably have it in a different order thinking I need to buy a new house, I need this, I need this for my family. And we, we, we probably don't have the order right, the majority of us. Yeah. I think linking to that, you, you see in the left of the hood, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu 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 Sallallahu. Uh, he's sleeping on a simple bed. You know, bed when he would get up, he had loads of marks on him. As mm. he come and ask him, look, beloved, oh, Prophet of Allah, you know, you want something better, just tell us and we'll give it to you. And he just replies by saying, I'm just a traveler in this world. This place is just in a, a temporary abode for me, a temporary stoppage place. And I'm going to be going to another place after this. So, you know, live your life simple. And if you take that, take what you learned in this, in this book and apply it into your life, and your life becomes very simple. Yeah. And it's that same, that same quote we hear again and again. If you chase Allah, you know, the world will chase you. Don't make it the other way around. Uh, and in that way, you can you will reap the blessings in every, in every situation. Exactly, man. Appreciate that. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but there's a there's a new show called um, Chit Chat Chai. So this, <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, started by Fulham. It is, I'm <laughs> Peter So it's, it goes along with what we're doing as well. So it's quite similar. I'm just going to play a little bit from that because um, it's, it's quite in line to things that we're doing, but it gives like a real perspective of, of what Khudam have been through in their life. Uh, and you can see like, you know, they're, they're a bit hesitant on going into too much detail about what they've done, but the main point is <clears throat> about how they've come out of that, that thing and how um, they, they talked about something really interesting. They said, they asked the question, um, what things do you think your parents are most proud of you? Uh, the things that you've done and all the people that, that said things, they would all say that um, they would come, it will come down to what they've done for the Jamaat, which is so interesting. And the things that they've done in their career actually comes secondary or third. Um, so those things, you know, those things are going to happen anyway. But what are the extra things that you've done for Allah and for the Jamaat? And it just made them realize that those are the actual things that really matter in life uh, for parents. And if your parents are pleased, then ultimately Allah is pleased as well. So let me just um, let me just share that quickly. I'll just play a bit from this. Can you guys see this? Yes. And it's about using that Jamaat network which we have. To say, look, we're here as brothers. That's why I have MKA. So you have different yeah. departments. You've got SED, you've got Khid the Khulk, you've got other departments, the beer department, to hold events, to keep our youth engaged, so that there's no time for them to go elsewhere. That's why it's so important for MKA to be engaging and to be on the forefront of discussions like this and on the forefront of holding activities, so that there's, there, there's stuff there for the youngsters to take part in. Yeah, you know, I agree on that, because I remember you masters. Uh, I had to go early because everyone was like, "Why are you hanging around?" Now I've got, got me. They go, "What meeting have you got?" Right? Because I'm <laughs> just saying, "You need." I'm like, "Yeah, I've got a uh, mosque meeting." Like, what are you on? Like, what? what? It doesn't mean like nine p.m. <laughs> and they just thought I was talking nonsense, man. They just thought, "Hey, this guy is just talking crap." Or something. 
But it's, it's true, it keeps you engaged, right? And you, and you get that. It's that, it goes back to that point, right, where I was reading a book, um, which is like actually ultimately, like my career, like I said, I want to do finance and money, but ultimately, actually, if there's no purpose or impact or servitude that you're doing. It's meaningless, right? Like, we're all sitting here, some of us are working from home, right? But you start to realize what's important and realizing that actually, if our work doesn't have any real impact, is it even worth it? Like what we're doing, right? You can talk about chasing money and this and that, but if there's no end purpose of making an impact on the world or servitude, then is there you a know point? What? Let me just let me interject on yeah. there. The whole COVID-19 situation yeah, yeah. and the key workers who went to work. Yeah? The fact that only key workers were out there working on the front line shows that service to humanity is first and foremost. Bankers, accountants, lawyers, whatever, you name it, they were all sat at home. They were on the, they were, they were on the front line. The people who are out on the front line serving humanity, giving their life on the line for the service of mankind, were key workers, were those individuals who were putting their own desires and the, their safety of their life on the back burner to serve humanity. And that's one thing, the, uh, that's one thing which religion teaches and nothing, nobody else teaches that. Always put your desires on the back burner. That's it. Yeah, so <laughs> um, that's really interesting. It just makes you open your mind up a bit and you know, we're all khudam, we're all going through different things. So Chit Chat Chai is basically a platform for like, four guys to come on. You had Anjum there, you had Danish, you have um, Saba as well, Murabi. So it's like a good mix of different kinds of people. And uh, it's good as well to know that, you know, even Murabis, you know, were our previous life and how our life changed through drama and everything. So it's good to learn from people's lives. And what he was saying, what Saba was saying as well, like to have these initiatives, I believe that, you know, we've started something, alhamdulillah, very good. And... You know, the more we do it, the more it will catch on and the more like these guys who are a bit away, you know, they'll also come in. Um, so with all your help and with prayers, you know, if we keep this up, you know, I really think that in the future it can become something so big for our region that more and more of these guys will, will be able to be attached to us and uh, inshallah will serve its purpose in some way, inshallah. So yeah, let's keep this up, man. Every week, you know, even if, you know, five, six people will still, will still carry it on and when we are together physically, you know, it will be even better. And, you know, the effect on people will, have, will be a lot more. So, Jazakallah, ma'am. Uh, Nas, let's go to you now. Uh, yep. Tell so, us what, how's, how's the lockdown been for you so far and how's everything? For me? Yeah. Did you see in GDK all the time, Rabi Sahib? It's crazy. He's a... What are you talking about? It's, hold on. This is... You guys gave blood the other day, didn't you? Well, yeah, that's right to you, but <laughs> it didn't work out. They Listen, said, well, you got the burkut, man. The niyat was there. You nearly you, you got yeah. some of it out. You got some of it out. Like a quarter, a quarter bag. They said that they're going to give it for like testing for like experimental stuff, and you know, they're not going to waste it. So, <laughs> that's fine. Blood is precious. Yeah, yeah, that as well. You're serving humanity, you know, it's such a big thing. So it's always good to be reminded of how important that is as well. Uh, I'm going to say, first of all, th uh, this is like, it's fairly quick. I've missed out a lot of stuff because on this topic of uh, the Jal, it's like, it's quite a big topic. And what I've been, I've just wrote loads of stuff, but I'm just going to paraphrase it all. And then I'd rather have like a little discussion of things that, that I've missed out or things that anyone wants to mention, because I feel like that's a better way of everyone understanding what's going on. So as I mentioned, uh, this week's uh, statement is part two from uh, last week's so let's do the coming of the the jaw. Mm. Um, so he has basically here's a few hadiths. I'm not going to read them out because they're quite long, but it's a description on the jaw and how they've said that he's going to come in the latter days. So here they've said that um, the word gaffer is going to be written on his forehead. Um, it's going to have a blind right eye, um, and the, and this is to do. I think this is to do with a a dream or something that the Prophet Muhammad uh, had. Um, where I think he was uh, yeah, going around the Gaba and um, Jesus son of Mary was there and behind him uh, was someone basically resembling an uh, infidel or so someone in the past like that and uh, he also was performing Tawaf around the Gaba and he asked who he was and he said he's the Messiah of the Jal and um, there's um, this other Hadith here which is talking about the transportation Thing that I'm sure everyone's heard this, and that he's going to appear on a white donkey. Um, and the, the fact that I didn't, this is something that I learned as well that it actually says white, but I didn't know everyone says donkey, but 
the fact that it's so clear, but I'll get onto that later. But yeah, and then saying the two ears will be 70 yards apart. And then this is another version of it as well underneath, uh, which basically says the same thing. And also saying that um, the distance of one leg will take basically a day and night's journey, showing the size of it. So what does this mean? Um, I'll read some of it out. The Hadith relating to the word Ghafir, written between the eyes, is in reference to how everyone would recognize their falsehood and how obvious it would be. This is proven by the Prophet Sallallahu saying to his companions uh, as they would be able to read it because they, they were not able to read. So how would the Prophet just say, oh, you'll be able to read it? So it shows that it's in a metaphorical sense. Um, and then again, the description here says the jaw will be... Um, strongly built and will be a white whitish reddish complexion and his hair will be short and curly this is in reality the, um, the general appearance of the european nations today and even some of the women as well they have short hair as well so that's the sign um and then again also so the blind right eye shows that basically it refers to the western nations um how strong they will be and in terms of the like materialistic and technology stuff and how advanced that would be like for example like how they're using technology to like genetically alter things that Allah has created which is obviously against Islam and even though technology can be used in a good way but it's just basically twisting it and making it bad for everyone um, so the word uh, one eye doesn't have to be taken literally Allah says in the Holy Quran whoever is blind in this world will be blind in the hereafter chapter 17 verse 73 so again this shows that is to do with the spiritual sight and that it will all be worldly and not anything to do with Islam. So again, this shows that it's metaphorical and not like physical one eye, you know. Um, again, this is a lot more explanation here as well. So um, again, the, the use of a donkey it signifies transport um, and to do with its size and the fact that its color being white, it can't be of like a real animal. And the fact that in the time of the uh, Holy Prophet, so donkeys were used as transport so that's, that would be the best way to describe it now. Uh, and this and all the other these mentioned refers to modern day transport like airplanes and trains, which again proves that it's a Western society, it's among us, and not some mythical, mythological creature. And the Holy Prophet also made it clear that the Jal would be killed through arguments and proof rather than physical killing. In one of these, he said, uh, when he, the Jal, makes his appearance and I'm in your midst, I will overpower him uh, by arguments. And if he makes his appearance and I am not in your midst, everyone should argue with him so it shows again it's not uh, a physical battle with the sword uh, and it's just with words um yeah and below again is uh, the same yes they say the same thing mm -hmm. so the understanding of the holy quran um so can you not see that islam is a religion of logic why is it that regarding the topic of the end time people deem it acceptable to make fairy tale stories just to instill fear into others and make Allah break all the laws and rules of this world just to fulfill this hadith. Uh, I would like to remind everyone that the Holy Quran is made for all of time and all people. It is written in a way for all of us to understand and make use of its teachings. How can Allah convey a message to the Holy Prophet ﷺ mentioning future people and technologies that doesn't exist yet? It was in a way for them to make sense of it with the capacity of knowledge that they had in that time. So it, like, for example, how would you know uh, God talk about cars or or trains like that wouldn't make sense um earlier on so yeah the prophet islam said the jal is not the name of one man according to the arabic lexicon the jal signifies a group of people who present themselves as trustworthy and pious but are neither trustworthy nor pious rather everything they say is full of dishonesty <laughs> and deceit oh, uh oh zaki's here uh, this uh, characteristic is to be found in the classic uh, in the class of Christians Hello. known as clerks. <laughs> Another group is that the <laughs> is that the philosophers and the thinkers who are busy trying to assume control of machines, industries, oh. and the defined scheme of things. They are the jaw and deceive God's creatures by their actions and <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can. Shall I carry on reading? Yeah, they are the the jar, uh, because they deceive God's creatures by action and talk claims as if they are partners in God's dom dominion. The clergy are ar uh, arrogating to themselves the state of prophethood because they ignore the true heavenly gospel and spread a perverted and corrupted version as the supposed translation of the gospel. 
and that's the final hadith that I want. I want to say this for all the parts I'm going to do. I'm going to leave you with this hadith just to show the importance of how we should uh, accept the promised Messiah. I just want to say as well beforehand um, that there's a few things that I didn't mention. For example, even when I was having a discussion with my mom, she was saying, I asked her, I said, what do you think the Jal is? And she was giving me the description that I didn't mention here about smoke coming out of the nose and carrying people, you know, in, uh, of the donkey and it carrying people in the belly and the fire, basically fuel and coal and all these modern transport things. And another thing that I didn't mention was that um, someone, I, I read it somewhere, so I can't exactly say it, but um, someone asked our Prophet Sallallahu how can we safeguard ourselves? And I think I discussed with you, Mabisab, yesterday that he said that we should use um, specific parts of uh, Surah Qaf to basically protect us. And if you actually read into that, it's uh, to do with the, like, all the, like, bad deeds and all the things that people do wrong. And that shows that's what the Jal is and not a creature, basically. So, yeah. Anything else anyone else want to add on, please? please uh... I just find, you know, you mentioned about the... Make sure you save your work, yeah. <laughs> but just uh, the book about the white donkey. That's yeah. What you have to understand in that time, people had no clue what a plane was. So yeah. of course, someone doesn't know about something. You're going to have to use a certain language or things that they already know to explain what it will be like. Uh, yeah. Just like we don't know what heaven is like, but in the Holy Quran, you know, we, we see words like honey and milk and these kind of things used. That's, mm. a, that's an idea of what it can be like. Allah uses pure items to make us understand that, you know, heaven is such an amazing place. So with them as well, to explain what a plane was, just like you said, a donkey was used for transport. Mm. But the way the, the Holy Prophecy is white. If you think about it, all planes are white. Exactly, yeah. They're not any other color if you think about it. Not, apart from maybe um, the Pakistan Airlines. <laughs> 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 apart from that, most of them, you know, they're all white, you know, so you can actually see them in the sky and everything, yeah. uh, which is incredible. Um, so that's something which uh, I actually got from your presentation. Um, but uh, it was also, it's also it would be nice to think to see what Sunnis say and other Muslims say what they think Dajjal is. I don't know, have you guys ever come across that in school and with your friends or anything? I have personally, obviously, they've, I've had little discussions about it and exactly the way that it's mentioned in the Hadith, that's exactly what they think it is. And they say that, you know what, if you're going to, they, they used to accuse me of twisting words. And I said, if, if you're just going to read blindly, you're just yeah. going to have a, a storybook in front of you rather than real life examples. But obviously, you can't argue with people who are closed-minded and won't accept the truth. They'll just be stuck on their own sort of teachings, what they've learned. What is, have, uh, what's your concept? What's your idea of this, the general <laughs> talk? My concept, the same concept, the concept that he has given us. Uh, yeah, he's right. Uh, this, the things which Nasir mentioned, it's all in uh, Khalifa Rabia Majlis uh, oh. Khalifa uh, clearly mentioned that was in Urdu that uh, the Jal Uga wo hmm. gadi, wo, uh, Khalifa Rabi was saying that wo gadi nahi paida ho sakti, jo itne bade gade ko janam degi, jo hmm. paida karegi wo pehle gadi leke aao, kahan se leke aao ge oh. to ye tha ke usme log baithenge, wo aisi sawari hogi aisi cargo ship hoga aisa cargo gada used for uh, sh- shipping the things or courier yeah. cargo things to wo aisi ek cargo jaga hogi jisme log baithenge Seats are very comfortable, hongi, luxury seats. Hongi. Kumkume jalenge, matlab lighting is like this. The kumkume is light on. Uh-huh. Hai. Then uh, he will eat fire. So fuel, petrol, dalega. he will eat fire. Nikalega bhi wo fire. The people who will accept him or his supervi- supervision or like his power, yeah. he will give him food and shelter and everything. The people who will oppose them, oppose him, they will send fire, they will throw rock, uh, nuclear power and uh, they will throw nuclear bombs and all these grenades and rocket launcher, everything in Afghanistan and everywhere we are seeing these things because we are opposing the superpower. Yeah, so there's he, a piece on this as well, saying that the, there'll be a mountain of food and a stream of uh, water. And it shows that even <clears throat> the Western countries are the ones that have all these resources. Exactly. But, like like you said, they're all struggling. Yeah, or the second thing was that if it's in the air, then it will 
چلنے سے پہلے آواز دے گا کہ میں چلنے لگا ہوں خلیفہ راب مینشن نیو یارک تو کراچی جانے لگا ہے جہاں آ جاؤ جتنے آنا ہے اور وہ ہوا میں نہیں اڑے گا بلکہ پانی میں بھی چلے گا اور پانی میں چلے گا تو اس کا سائز اتنا بڑا ہو جائے گا کہ وہ سالوں کا سفر ہفتوں میں اور ہفتوں کا سفر دنوں میں کیا کرے گا اس کا ایک پاؤں ایسٹ میں ہوگا تو دوسرا پاؤں ویسٹ میں ہوگا تو اس طریقے سے ساری نشانیاں اور اس کے دو کانوں کے درمیان ون ہنڈریڈ اینڈ سیون سینٹی میٹر کا فاصلہ بھی ہوگا دو ونگس کے درمیان اتنا کلیئر خلیفہ رابی نے مینشن کیا اپنی اس مجلس عرفان میں اٹس موسٹ پاپولر کلپ آف خلیفہ رابے اباؤٹ دا جان Yeah, this is a real shame because it's still a concept and people still believe it. And I was remember watching a, a program, Faith Matters on MTA, and they were saying it and they were like, this is like literally a children's story. When you put a child to bed, you know, you'll say things like this and, you know, he will think about it like a cartoon. For some reason or another, people have just bought into it and thought that this is actual concept. Um, and I was just t- literally typed it on Google Translate. I just typed in Dajala, which is what the word Dajal comes from and literally comes up meaning fake or... Um, to, uh, to, to make delusional. Delusion. And so anything that falls into that, um, whether it's the news, whether it's the superpowers, they, they literally change. As you know, we're going through times where Islam and the name of Islam has been so corrupt now that people have fully been delusionized that Islam is, is, a, is a region of terrorism. And so that's what Dajjal is. That's what the concept of Dajjal is. And the reason why the Holy Prophet Sallallahu saw and Hazrat Masimo and Dajjal at the same time in his, in, his, um, in his vision of Miraj was because they would come at the same time. And Hazrat Masimo would come at the time where Islam would be at its lowest point and all the mullahs and so-called scholars who are leading Islam, they're the actual people who are fully making Islam a fake religion, a religion of, that's made up. Uh, that's why Hazrat Masimo came at the same time. That's why that vision, they both, both those men were standing together. Um, that's why Dajjal's eye, one eye is open, one eye is closed because his eye of spirituality is completely closed and it's all become material. And we see that today with all the, all the things on TV. Uh, that's why this topic is so important and many people, want, once they've understood the true concept of Islam, my father-in-law, for example, he was told by the Murabis the true concept of Dajjal and that's what made him realize that Ahmadiyyat is a true religion and it's a, it's a religion of logic. Um, and that's what you, what you spoke about. Islam is a religion of of um, logical arguments and we have to answer people logically uh, yeah. which is what will destroy the jal which is what will destroy these people's concepts yeah man uh, that was good man that's good explanation no you can't fit all these things in in the in your presentation yeah of course yeah. that's why i think we should concentrate now more on actually opening up and discussing yeah. whatever we do because then you can always learn new ideas with each yeah. other. Yeah, I was going to do the Jal, I told you I was going to do the Jal and Gog Magog together. But then you were like, like, no, 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 do them separately. Now I realize why you said do it separately. Yeah. One more thing about this uh, Surah Kahaf. It is in 15th para. Um, the first Ruku and the last Ruku on, on, the, on Friday. That's the most suitable uh, time on Friday after Fajr. The first Ruku of Surah Kahaf so, and the last Ruku of Surah Kahaf. Hmm. To get rid of these all things. Yeah. And it's just, it's also, um, the Jal sometimes, it's, it's almost like waswasa, it's almost like the whispering in your ears. Uh, sometimes when you, when you, something comes in your mind, you are diverted away from something. That's why we're taught to read these, these parts of the Quran, because it takes that away from us. Um, so again, there's another magic of the Holy Quran, you know, to protect us from all these kind of evils. Uh, yeah, man, yeah. Really good, man. There's a good discussion, huh? Yeah, that was really good. I, I enjoyed that. That's probably one of the best ones because everyone has a part in it and it's, I like it better that way. Hamza has a part. Hamza, what are you saying? <laughs> Hamza, I'm sure you've had discussions with your friends, you know, you, maybe your Shia friends or something. Uh, you. Not specifically about the Jal. Um, mm. It's more about, um, de- not, not with Shia mates, but other non ethnic mates. It's more to do with um, death of Jesus and stuff like that. Um, for the jar, I think you touched on it briefly, Nasser. It's just um, it's not one person or one like monstrous being. It's a it's a group of people, isn't it? And I think from what was the reference, Nasser, for the all the um, the writing that was from thingy, wasn't it? From uh, was it from Essence of Islam? Um, I was from the conscious side, but um... yeah. Oh, it might have been one of the Urdu books, but in Essence of Islam, there's a I think volume four. 
there's a he basically says it's um it's through Christianity, isn't it? You mentioned it briefly mm-hmm. that um the people who um take the uh so the the, the clerics, the priests, etc., mm-hmm. who um who make Jesus to be a deity, to make him to be a god. And um from this one thing it's referenced to Quran as well. I can't remember the actual the actual the verse, but um just because of that that he says it as if Allah says if the heavens may nigh cleave asunder, just from this one this one thing. And all of it is really linked to that how how and that's also from the last um, the last bit of Surah Al Fatiha, isn't it? Those who have not incurred that dispersion, those who have not gone astray. Um from that praise talking about it was in Mecca, wasn't it? It was revealed, and he's talking about the Jews and the Christians. Um that a time will come when Muslims will become like the Jews and the Christians will have the um the the main bulk of material power, worldly power, and they'll be devoid of faith and they'll have gone astray. And um, that's what the Dajjal is essentially. That's what you're praying for at the end of Surah Al Fatiha, to not to come to lose to lose the right path and to become like the Christians and the Jews of this time, but predominantly Christians because they have the main material power of the age. I saw I like getting different um, perspectives because Mubariz, you know the the ideology in Pakistan. You bring that into the show. You know what they're talking about, and you have you know you guys on on the street or in the schools. And you know this is it's true. We have to put all the ideas together and really try to wrap our minds around each topic to be able to you know we're Ahmadis for a reason. But if we don't know why we're Ahmadis, you know it's not we're never going to increase our faith. So hopefully through these conversations, you know you can get one step closer to that. Mm-hmm. Tiga, um, now should we play the should we do the kahoot now? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yes, yeah, kahoot, boy, boy. Because uh, Riyab, he I keep messaging him every week. He's got something. Um, this week was a genuine excuse. His uncle had some heart condition, which he had to, which he had to go check check up yeah. on. So he sends his salam, and uh, he says, "I've prepared a really good one for you again." So let's hope and pray that it's a good one. Um, also, we should try to look at you know the segments that we we make. Let's try push them out as well. So I'm gonna find a way to get them onto different platforms. Um, maybe through or MK Tribute as well, national team. I'm gonna try to link with them and try to get our stuff out as well because I think it's it's really amazing the stuff like the conversation today I think has been amazing. Um, if we can just keep on doing that. Yep. Yeah, so everyone join us. The code is two seven zero one zero five. Two seven zero. Abid, how are you, man? It's been quiet as well. The modulator of the <laughs> our Zoom meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize, man. <laughs> uh, I was just doing some research. Yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> How many questions is it, NASA? Um, I think there was twenty in it. Is it, uh, is it um, okay. Made it, so, yeah, I didn't see any questions. So I'm joining in. Oi, 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 oi. That's going to win again. I could have seen them all. Oi, 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 oi. Who's Billy? I keep forgetting these names. Billy's here every week, but who's Billy? <laughs> the Dark Horse. <laughs> Sabir. Who's gold? Sabir, bhai. Sir. I think the bar is by the gold, the jar go, I think. Who's <laughs> the. <laughs> Oh my days. Mine's only coming up with the Arabic keyboard. <laughs> I think that's one, two, three, four, five. I think that's what was, huh? Was it Rahad just on? Was that yeah, on? He, he left. Uh, he said he has to go somewhere. Was it Wolf or Ron? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Big man. Married at that. Yeah. <laughs> Kept on quiet. Is anyone else? I don't know if you're still there. I think Zayed's... He's, he's pulled a the fast one, put his phone on and left the room. <laughs> <laughs> start it, man. Oh, no, I'm still there, man. I'm still there, guys. Oh, yeah, just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Doing something, I'll be honest with you, man. Uh, you guys play. I'm sorry, man. I'm just um, doing something at the same time, man. No worries, bro. No worries. You need to lose. That's what it is. Missing your presentation side by me. <laughs> yeah. You didn't tell us about what's happening, though. 
Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I can, uh, after we do Kahoot, I'm not sure how many, yeah. Um, you know, if, if you want, we, I can say right now or after Kahoot. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, one second. Just a quick one before we start. Just quickly. Da, 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 da. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one. I'm really slow with this IT stuff, man. Shall I? Um, uh... Yeah, so uh, I can't share the screen, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, so uh, we've got this, um, what do you call it? On the next uh, uh, league discussion, we are, uh, the focus is more uh, this time. Uh, the subject, actually, uh, topic we've, we've chosen, it's, um, you know, it's basically... Um, equality in Islam. Yeah, equality in Islam. So... Um, I just wanted to basically uh, be Saab, uh, who you know recommended for us to you know uh, discuss this topic on our next oblique discussion. And uh, as I've said to before as well to others as well that if there is a topic that you know you wish for it to uh, be um, you know uh, discussed on the oblique discussion, you know do let me know. So uh, be Saab, he he chose this subject, and Alhamdulillah, it's a very subject which is you know, in at the moment and a lot of people are, um, you know, discussing this and um, a lot of people's point of view is being considered. And obviously for us, um, you know, as MDs, it's very important that we kind of understand the Islamic point of view of uh, the situation, you know, of the uh, Black Lives Matters and not just that the other, um, you know, equalities, what Islam has, which teaches us between the fairity between women and men and all these other, you know, of way of how to treat another and so on. So basically for next Wednesday, our topic um, on the bleak discussion will be more of an open the bleak discussion. Uh, yeah, open um, outreach discussion where we will be, you know, talking about this topic. And um, Rabbi uh, Tahir Salbi Saab from Hartley Paul he he will uh, you know uh, share his um, uh, his his presentation on this. So inshallah, you know, I wanted to request you know members who have joined today as well to also invite your friends as well. You know, for them to uh, be involved in this, which is going to be again on uh, next Wednesday, 7 p.m. As always, that the league discussion happens at that time, and it will be a great chance for them to also be a part of this program. And for them to, you know, really understand what is the Islamic point of view on, on this matter. And it's very important that we also understand, um, you know, ourselves, uh, you know, the Islamic uh, teachings and what the Islam teaches us, you know, it's, it's a great guidance. And that's how we should be, you know, living our lives as well. That's how we should be treating one another. You know, everyone is equal. We should give the same respect. So all these things, you know, we, we will inshallah try to cover in the, the bleak discussion. So again, you know, do invite your friends, do also join as well. And I'm sure that you can benefit from this um, training as well. Uh, that was all. So we have made a poster as well. I'll try to see if I can uh, share it on the chat. I don't know if I can, but I don't know. Can I send it on the chat, Abir Bay or um, Is there any way that I can? Um, <clears throat> you can drag and drop it into the chat box, see if it works. Okay, I'll try to send it so you guys can also have a look. You know, it's been made by uh Hasham Saab, who is our um Nazim Mishat from the secretary. Uh, you know, our yes, I need any, any design work you have to do is do it through him because it's his, it's his job, really, and he's really good at yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, do you know what? I, 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 I just I was making these posters like literally every week, so I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm a bit like a bit more I don't know shy or something like that to, like just to be like, oh, do you know what? Here you go, you can do this. I don't know, but um, do you know what the poster he made? I was just like, wow, <laughs> man. I was just I was looking at my poster and I was like, <laughs> I know I'm not good at it, but I was just looking at his poster and I was like, wow. <laughs> so yeah alhamdulillah it's a, it's a very beautiful poster which he's made if i'm able to share send it you know it'll, it'll be it's, it's very good do you want to share screen you can maybe show it yeah 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 let me let me share the screen if i can now um let me share the screen and yeah so this is the poster which is uh designed for us 
it's just the uh, um, you know this outer in the inner side. I mean, so this part here, and it's, it's a very nice like um, the way he's made it. I mean, like I don't know. Everyone has their own little skills, but it's very nice the way he's made it, and very nice of him to. I didn't even ask him, and he uh, you know he designed this for us. So um, you know, do obviously the point is that to share this with our um, contacts, <coughs> to make them attractive to you know get involved and also you know learn um, from you know the Islamic teaching as well. So yeah, good. Okay, man, that's good. Inshallah, it goes well. Jazakallah, um, Jazakallah. Let me just stop screen. Yep. Welcome, man. Jazakallah. Okay. <laughs> Give it off to her. She's like, she's like, wear your masjid hat. Not right now. We're not reading the Mars at the moment, Minister. <laughs> Mashallah. Pretty well trained kid, kids, Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to, man. Tika. <laughs> Jazakallah, man. Let's, let's uh, do Kahoot and let's wrap this day up, Mashallah. It's been a very nice program so far. Uh, that's I'm I think you, you came out though. There's three people now. Yeah. Oh. Let's do something. Hey, Chich. Yeah, I think that's it. Five of us. All right, then let's start. Let me start. Anyone got any objections? I'll start. Can you say or do will be held against you? Mm-hmm. 20 questions, yeah. Okay. What university has a Mizan Nasser Mizara attempt? Nasser Ahmed, oh. I don't know, man. I know which one is Leaf at Rabi went to. What do you guys think? Yes. All right, right. Chase. Khalifa went to Oxford, you know. I've got some more question up as well, and I don't know. What do you wish to do? Do you have a chance who is the full of Hans of? Oh, no, MIT. that. <laughs> What's MIT? Oh, I, don't I, think it is. I think I don't know what it is, actually. MIT is in um, America. It's a very prestigious, I think, engineering, engineering related or physics related. It's... No one got it right. No one got it right? Nope. True or false? No. Sharks no. lay eggs. Definitely true. Do sharks lay eggs? Do sharks lay eggs? Definitely, 100%. No. <laughs> That's, you have to get confirmation. <laughs> I think the only fish in the sea is, which is mammal, is a whale, no? Oh, I thought they did, man. Fish. Oh my god. Let's get it wrong. <laughs> no way, Hamza. You get it wrong. Yeah, I thought they did. No, man. It's only very hard. I just Maybe did. Maybe it was one of those rumors. What's the confidence of Hamza? Way of dolphins. So anyway, I thought it was one of those rumors, probably. One of those myth busters. I beg you to not put this up on you. I've never really thought about it, to be honest. There you go. Back there. Look who's top. <laughs> How much food does an elephant eat in a day? Oi. Oi. That's going to bloody hell, man. Too much. Uh, well, it's kind of open, isn't it? 100. Asking how I mean, many humans. Oh, God. Yes, boys. Come on. Oi, got us. Oh, my God. Sir. I should have been called H as well. What is the key difference between an African and Asian elephant? Oh. I think I've heard this one. I know this. Yes, I got it right. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah, you can always tell by the ears. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Which one is bigger though? Oh, it's a tight affair. H, you're going down. What does this quote belong to? Swords can win territories, but not hearts. Forces can bend heads, but not mind. 
points. Oh no. Khalifa Rabe. All the way. H, you got that, yeah? Naive. Wait, I thought it was from a side as well. Oi. Go with the job, go. The job is flying today. <laughs> flying. <laughs> what is the translation of Hamda Kathiran? Hamda Kathiran. Hamda Kathiran. Who is giving? Mm. Abu, everyone can hear you. Hamdan Kathiran. Tayyaban Mubarakan Fi. Oh, okay. Oh, work, but. Long, I don't want to go long, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you told me to learn translation as well. <laughs> what was the Shahada finger used for amongst the Arabs before Salat was introduced? Hmm. What? Um, Could have been anything, really. Ah, I don't get point. <laughs> it's like, it must be that, but then it's obviously wrong because it's too obvious, but I don't know. It's like. I think making fun of swearing one of them. No. Walla. Walla. Swearing. swearing mean Walla. Kasam say. <laughs> I swear. Oh, yeah. Okay. Walla Habibi. <laughs> oh, yeah. They do this a lot. Wallahi. Wallahi. They are Habibi. They are Habibi. The position of sitting after two months. Ah, uh, that's easy. Hope you want to question. At a, uh, what? Oh, buddy. Bet now. I do you know what I said. Joker. Oh, what? I got wrong. Come on, lads. Skada literally means sitting. Other position means sitting position. But at least I know about that only. Okay. What is the fastest type of bird? Oh, it has to be. Oh, no, wait. Oh, it's one of those. Okay, one of the seagull, yeah. Yes. yeah right. <laughs> Falcon Fury. Yeah, I knew these Falcon punch. Allah Hafiz by by. They have been female in the UK, yeah. Don't ask me what the UK asked me for Germany, I can tell you. <laughs> Megan Michael. What? <laughs> I, uh, Come on, boys. Theresa May yes. and Norma Fuller. Oh, th- there was that. Who's that? The Ding Dong. I thought that was going to be one way. Ding Dong. What was it? Hamza? Margaret Thatcher. Yes, Thatcher. Oh. Oh, thank you. I'm confused, man. Okay. I should know. thing a society. Who was the English monarch during World War One? Acha ye konta. Konta. George. I reckon it was George, man. Man, there's 50 yeah. Elizabeth, so I don't know. Uh, I, don't I knew it was George, but I didn't choose it. <laughs> Why? I thought Edward or George. So that means you didn't know. <laughs> How many branches of McDonald's in the world? Oh, oh it is. How many? Wow. 40 to 50,000 deaf for deaf for. I think it. I don't know. 30, 30 oh, yeah, I got it right. <laughs> yes, right. 32 for <laughs> Last second chose that. What question are we on? FB. 14. What country does uh, Kia cars belong to? Should Japan? Or Japan or concert? South Korea, Japan. Japan, you're so Oh, no, I think I picked the wrong one. I don't know. Oh, Abe, South yeah. Korea. South Korea, wow. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Which Muslims dance as a form of worship? They are Muslims. Oh, no. Um, I should know this. Sufi, Sufism, 100%. Oh, no. Which one is it? Sufism. Yes, Sufism, 100%. Yes. 
Actually, yeah, I've got fun these birds. Show media. Do you show media? Hmm? Click on show media. Oh. Oh, oh, I didn't click on it. Whoops. Very, very... I think there was a video. Was there? Yeah. I'll, I'll go back to it after we're done and see if there was. Uh, where does the word Punjab derive from? Five rivers. Five rivers, 100%. <laughs> He's just telling you all answers. <laughs> There's Punjab right outside our. our yeah, five rivers. Yeah, okay. Now I know why it's called that. Punjab. It's called Punjab. Punjab. Oh. Yeah, Punjab. Uh, which, what district is Punjab in Badian? Oh my god, I don't know this. Oh my god. Gurdaspur? Yes. Gurdaspur. I think. Gurdaspur. Gurdaspur, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just listening to everyone's conversation there. But if ever show media comes, see if there's a media. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think I've added something, I'm not sure. Which continent in the world has no active volcano? Which mm. It has to be. It's a good question as well. Yeah. Yeah, we go. What? Am I the only one going right? Yeah, uh, yeah one person. <laughs> oh, Most of us went for Canada. Oh, he said continent, man. Canada's not a continent. Flip sake. Oh, I didn't see that. That's the media. When I click the show media, that's what comes up. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Next question 19 out of 20. Yeah, always. It's a good day today. Who was the first to allow women to vote? Ooh. Probably New Zealand, you know. He's going to write Germany. I think it's New Zealand, the land of freedom. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I think we choose it, but I knew it. Oh, God. Yeah, you're... <laughs> I don't think you put any pictures up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just thought maybe there was. Uh, I, I was thinking the same. I wanted to see some dancing movies. <laughs> anyway, that's what I thought you would <laughs> What is the name of the sajda performed after namaz when a mistake has been made in Salah? Sajda Sahaba B, right? Nah. <laughs> 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 Sajda Dabara, I love that. Sajda Dabara. Oh, come on, lads. It's me. I'm yeah. throwing back. Boys, we're always wanting to go, man. I need to go. Cholo, cholo, yar. Zakla, welcome. Okay. Okay. Assalamualaikum, boys. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Love you. Be right, bro. Oh, well, let's click everyone left. What's these three messages here? Most uh, things I was saying. Yeah. Who's iPhone? I don't know. Let's find out. Hello, iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a new version coming out? Yeah, I heard you. I heard the iPhone 12 gonna have zero ports. Zero, oh, no, zero ports. Uh, zero uh, charging cables with it. Really? Yeah, it's not going to come with any charging cables because they're going to save like the e net waste or something like that. They said like millions of pounds are going to be saved. Yeah, just, just from not including the charger. You know, they said about the iPhone, they said the final iPhone, they would just give all the parts and they'll tell us, tell you to put it together yourself. <laughs> you know how now they're slowly, they're making you buy the, the different parts of everything. 